Welcome to the e-commerce badassery podcast, the place for scrappy female entrepreneurs who want to learn actionable steps and strategies to grow the traffic, sales, and profit in your e-commerce business. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster, a 20-year retail veteran who spent three years as the only employee of a seven-figure online store. That shit was crazy. I know exactly how it feels to do all the things and I'm sharing everything I learned the hard way so you don't have to. I may have started this business by accident, but supporting badass bosses like you lights me the fuck up and I am so stoked to see you grow. Are you ready, babe? Let's roll. Welcome back to the e-commerce badassery podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Chatillo Coster. If you're new here, welcome. We talk all about how to grow the traffic, sales, and profit in your online store. So if that's what you're trying to do, you are in the right place. Make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button in your favorite podcast player so our episodes are downloaded automatically and you never miss a thing. So tell me, Are you ready to be blown away by the latest trend in the world of content creation? I'm talking about the rise of AI content generators. That's right, AI-powered content creation tools are becoming more and more popular, and they're changing the game in a big way. With the help of these innovative tools, you can now create high-quality content faster than ever before. From articles and blog posts to social media captions and product descriptions, AI content generators are capable of producing a wide range of content types with incredible accuracy and efficiency. In this episode, we'll dive deep into the world of AI content generators and explore how they work, what benefits they offer, and what the future holds for this exciting technology. So buckle up and get ready to witness the amazing rise of AI content generators. Okay, that sounded a little too excited. Let's try this. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in AI-powered content generators. These tools have gained popularity for their ability to create a variety of content types with speed and accuracy. From social media posts to product descriptions, AI content generators are changing the landscape of content creation. In this episode, we'll take a closer look at AI content generators, their benefits, and what the future may hold for this technology. So let's explore this topic in more detail and discover what all the hype is about. If you're thinking those sounded like AI-generated intros, you would be correct. We'll come back to those intros in a minute, but first, let's try my own intro, the one I actually wrote for this. Unless you've been living under a rock over the last few months, you've likely seen AI content generators making quite the splash on the internet. While AI content generators have been around for a while, it was the release of ChatGPT that really took the internet by storm and all of a sudden, every platform that requires creating content has an AI content generator. In fact, Shopify Magic is an AI content generator that writes e-commerce product descriptions. It was released a few weeks ago along with a bunch of other updates I talked about on episode 201 of the podcast. When I logged into Notion the other day, I saw a prompt to open up AI as well. Over the next year, I expect we'll see a lot more enter the market. Google's Baird is currently in testing mode with some trusted partners, though it should be publicly available over the next couple of weeks. Tools like Jasper, which have been around for a while, are also likely to get more attention. It's been really interesting to see the reaction across the internet to the AI content creation craze. Some marketers are super excited about it. Others wonder if it's coming for their jobs. There are already websites dedicated to helping you write better prompts. And there are others who keep saying they expect content quality across the internet to take a dip while everyone is figuring out how to properly use these tools. And I'm sure you've seen a meme or two that pokes fun at all the duplicate copy people expect to start seeing. I'll stick one in the show notes on my website if you want to giggle. When it comes to understanding these tools and how they're going to fit into the overall digital marketing landscape, the first thing to understand is that it will not 100% replace human writers, as you can tell from the intros I shared. 
at least not right now. They can't capture your unique voice and struggle to see the nuance in human communication. AI generators can also produce inaccurate or outdated results. The technology behind ChatGPT is not connected to the internet and it only knows the information it has been fed and it has only been trained up through 2021. While some generators are connected to the internet, that doesn't even necessarily mean they're going to perform better because there's a lot of inaccurate and outdated information on the internet too. In fact, when Google unveiled Baird, it produced an inaccurate answer to one of the prompts during the demonstration. You also have to remember that these tools don't really understand what they're saying. It's a computer generating words based on an algorithm. Who knows what the future will bring and how the technology will evolve, but right now it is not 100% reliable and does require a human touch. So what are the best AI content generation tools? Well, there are a lot of them and there's a few different methods they use in the back end. We're not going to get into all the technical details of the platforms today. And we're really going to be focusing on two specific platforms, really the most popular ones and the ones that I've actually used. And those are ChatGPT and Jasper AI, which was formerly known as Jarvis and Conversion AI. Speaking of Jasper, I do have a special deal for you if you're interested in trying Jasper. So stick around to the end or you can just cheat and skip ahead to the show notes for all the details. There are also numerous different use cases for these tools, which we will touch on briefly, but what I really want to dive into today is creating written content. So the most important step in the process of using these AI content generators to help you in the writing process is writing really great prompts for them. And this is something I confirmed during my testing and in my research for this episode. In fact, there are already tons of websites and posts popping up that walk you through how to actually use the tools and create great prompts. I'll stick some additional resources in the show notes, but here's the gist. The more generic your prompt, the more generic the response. And the way you create these prompts is going to depend on the tool you use. For instance, ChatGPT is just a chatbot where you ask questions and essentially have a conversation. The only input you have is the questions you ask. That doesn't mean you can't get good results from ChatGPT. It just means you have to be more intentional with the prompts that you give it. And keep in mind that because it's a chatbot, you can also give follow-up questions based on the initial content you got to get different results. This will make more sense as we chat through this. So remember the two intros I shared with you? For the first version, the prompt I gave it was, write a conversational blog post intro in an excited tone about the rise of AI content generators. Because it sounded a little too excited for my taste, I followed up with another prompt that said, tone down the excitement a little bit. And then I got the second intro. Jasper, on the other hand, which, by the way, is accessing the same data as ChatGPT. It's driven by the same technology in the back end. Jasper gives you a more robust interface to guide you through the creation of that prompt. So instead of just staring at a chatbot and putting a question in there, you're first picking a template such as a Facebook ad, video script, blog post, intro, etc., Then you give it some base information about the topic, the brand you're talking about, and then you also set the tone of voice you want to use. Inside of Jasper, they also have some additional partnership tools you can subscribe to for a deal, such as an SEO checker, a plagiarism checker, and it even gives you access to Grammarly. So how do you create great prompts for AI content generators? Just like the content you'd create from scratch, there are a few things you need to have in place before you can even start using the tool beyond just the topic you're covering. And remember, the tool you use is going to dictate how you implement this. 
Jasper is going to guide you through what information you should give it through distinct fields. Chat GPT, on the other hand, just gives you one field, a chat box. So you're going to have to include all of the details in the prompt that you give. So the first step is to start with your goal in mind. Before you can create a great prompt, you have to know what outcome you're looking to achieve. Is this for a blog post that you hope will rank well with Google? Is this for an email to get a customer to buy a specific product? Or is it a product description for your website? Once you know the goal of your content, then you can start outlining what information you need to feed the generator. Next is know who the audience is for this content. Knowing who the content is for will allow the generator to create content that is more tailored to that audience. Take the topic of AI content generators, for example. The information and examples I'm providing you as an e-commerce business owner or marketer is different than what I would talk to a web developer about, since you can also ask it to write code for you. Another great way to generate more useful and better converting copy from an AI generator is to prompt them to write in certain copywriting frameworks. There are a number of them out there, AIDA being one of the most popular. And hint, if you're not familiar with the different copywriting frameworks or how they're structured, you can ask ChatGPT and it'll explain them to you. Next up, ask yourself, how do you want your content to sound? Is it professional, funny, witty, friendly, or do you want to impersonate a celebrity? In the Jasper tool, there is a separate field that prompts you to choose a tone of voice, but you can include it in the written prompt that you enter into ChatGPT as well. You'll also want to make sure you include key points or key words that you want included in your content. If you're using AI to generate product descriptions, then you're going to want to make sure you feed the features and benefits of that product to the content generator. If you're creating an SEO optimized blog post, then you'll need to feed the keywords you're aiming to rank for. You'll also want to get in the habit of using follow up prompts or just asking for updated results if you're not happy with what you got the first time around. Like I mentioned with ChatGPT, once you review the initial content, you can ask follow-up questions, you can give additional prompts, you can ask them to adjust something, and I'll walk you through an example of that in a moment. So before we move on, let's find out what ChatGPT said when I asked it for five tips and tricks for creating great prompts for ChatGPT. Number one, be clear and specific. When creating a prompt, it's important to be as clear and specific as possible about the topic you want ChatGPT to generate content on. This will help ensure that the responses are relevant and on point. Two, use open-ended questions. Avoid closed-ended questions that can be answered with a simple yes or no. Instead, ask open-ended questions that encourage ChatGPT to generate more detailed and insightful responses. Three, provide context. Give ChatGPT some context about the topic you're asking it to generate content on. This could include information about the target audience, the purpose of the content, and any relevant background information. Four, use natural language. Try to use natural language when creating your prompts as this will help ChatGPT understand your intent and generate more accurate responses. Avoid using overly technical or formal language unless it's absolutely necessary. Five, experiment and iterate. Don't be afraid to experiment with different types of prompts and see what works best. You may need to iterate on your prompts and refine them over time in order to get the best results. All right, now that we understand what these tools are and how to get the most out of them, let's go through some example prompts so you can get a sense of how to write them. So for instance, if you hop in there and say, give me 10 curiosity subject lines for email, it's likely going to spit out some salesy generic stuff that you would never say. 
If you ask for blog post ideas for your industry, there will likely be some decent prompts, but nothing earth shattering that you probably couldn't think of on your own. But if you ask it to write an email using the AIDA copywriting framework to encourage e-commerce business owners to invest in an e-commerce marketing membership to grow the traffic, sales, and profit in their online store, you might get something decent as a jumping off point. Once you get that first result, you can also give it follow-up prompts such as use a more conversational tone and the name of the membership program is The Lounge. Then it will rewrite the email with your updates. If you want to see the results of these prompts and some others that I tested out, make sure you check out the show notes on my website. Go to ecommercebadassery.com forward slash 205. So are AI content generators only for creating content? The short answer is no. While that was the main focus of our conversation today, tools like ChatGPT can be used for more than just creating written content. How about we let ChatGPT tell us all the ways it can be used? Number one, information retrieval. You can ask ChatGPT for information on a wide range of topics such as history, science, technology, culture, and more. ChatGPT can access a vast amount of knowledge and provide you with accurate answers to your questions. Accurate is questionable. Two, personal assistance. ChatGPT can assist you with various tasks such as setting reminders, scheduling appointments, making reservations, and more. You can also use ChatGPT as a language translator or to practice your language skills. Note, pretty sure this is not accurate because ChatGPT cannot access my device, and if you ask it to set a reminder for you, it will tell you that and then give you alternatives on how to actually do that. Number three, creative writing. ChatGPT can help you generate ideas for creating writing projects such as stories, poems, and scripts. You can provide ChatGPT with a prompt and it will generate a response based on the information it has learned from a large corpus of text. 4. Education. ChatGPT can be used as an educational tool for students and teachers. It can provide explanations for complex concepts, answer questions, and even generate quizzes and tests. Number 5. Customer service. ChatGPT can be integrated into customer service systems to provide quick and accurate responses to customers' inquiries and concerns. Number six, research. ChatGPT can help researchers by providing them with access to a vast amount of information on various topics. It can also assist with data analysis and generating hypotheses. Number seven, entertainment. ChatGPT can be used for entertainment purposes, such as playing games, telling jokes, and engaging in casual conversation. So the question we're all wondering is, should you use AI content generators? The short answer is sure. As long as you use them responsibly and understand that not only does it take some time to get good at prompting them, but the final result will require a human touch. One of the main reasons someone might want to use an AI content generator is to save time. Running an online business, any online business, requires a lot of content creation, whether it's blog posts to gain organic traffic, social media posts to engage your audience, or product descriptions for your e-commerce website. We are all creating a shit ton of content. Whether or not these tools are a time saver for your content creation depends. It depends on your business, your relationship with writing content, and your particular use case. For some people, the idea of staring at a blank page and blinking cursor is the worst experience ever. For others, they love to write. If you're writing about something you already know that doesn't take a ton of research, it's likely the content will just pour out of you anyway. If you're trying to create product descriptions for thousands of products in multiple different languages, then an AI content writing assistant will probably be really helpful. If you run a content website or are creating content for multiple clients, then an AI content generation tool will likely save you a ton of time. And ultimately, as you get better at feeding these tools information and creating better prompts, you'll get better responses and it will definitely take you less time. 
To give you a baseline, in my research, specifically with Jasper AI, writing a really great long form blog post optimized for SEO, fully edited, takes about two hours. That could absolutely be faster than if you started writing it from scratch, especially if it required research on your end. This episode definitely took me more than two hours to put together. Aside from the intros I generated for demonstration purposes and were otherwise noted, I didn't use a generator for any of the other content. But this episode required a lot more research than usual because this is not something that I've been doing for years. Is there a time when you wouldn't want to use an AI content generator? Well, if you're someone who doesn't typically struggle with writing, it's possible that the generator will actually slow you down. Personally, I find it easier to write from scratch than to tweak and edit something else. So instead of having a fully written piece of content, I'd rather have a prompt to work from. So for example, catch their attention with a staggering statistic or polarizing opinion about the industry. Pique their interest and connect with them by demonstrating that you understand what they're going through. Generate desire by telling them how you can solve their problem with your offer or product and give a clear call to action so they know what to do next. That, by the way, is a basic example of the ADA copywriting framework, attention, interest, desire, action. I also happen to just write the way I talk and after years of creating written marketing content, I don't really struggle with that part of it. Could my content be better if I used an AI writing assistant? Maybe. I'm certainly not ruling it out for myself. But am I going to be pumping out tons of AI-generated content for the sake of generating more content? Not likely. Now, for the special deal I mentioned for Jasper AI, if you want to give it a test drive, you can get 10,000 free credits to use when you sign up using my referral link. This can be a great way to get your feet wet with the tool. To make sure you get the most out of your free words, go in with a plan and use the tips I provided in this episode to guide the information you provide Jasper with to make sure you're getting the best results possible. You'll also want to be mindful of how many results you ask for. Start with just one or two at a time You can always ask for more, but this way you're not generating too many unnecessary words at once. So I'm curious, what do you think about AI content generators? Have you been using one? Are you curious about it? Do you think you were getting shitty results because you didn't fully understand how to use it and give it good prompts? Come on over to Instagram and tell me all the things. Make sure you check the show notes for some additional resources on writing great prompts and to get the 10,000 free credits from Jasper if you want to give it a try. And that's a wrap, friend. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful if you'd leave a review on Apple Podcasts and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you're looking to surround yourself with more product entrepreneurs who totally get your life right now, get your booty on over to the e-commerce badassery Facebook group. Can't wait to see you there. Until next time, e-commerce friends, stay badass.